welcome back students uh, today we will discuss on condenser so condenser basically a part of refrigeration uh, rec system uh, so we will discuss on basically in vcr system actually now we will discuss on condenser so condenser basically an important device which is basically important device in high pressure side of uh, refrigeration system as we know that uh, we, we all of you know that the vcr cycle actually the main four components are there one is compressor condenser evaporator and expansion valve or capillary tube but uh, we already discussed on the previous lecture video uh, about uh, compressors now in this lecture video we will discuss on condensers so condenser first of all is an important device okay it's an important device which is basically used which is basically used in the high pressure side of refrigeration system so there are basically two sides are there so either low pressure side and high pressure side we know that is basically in evaporator pressure and condenser pressure so basically condenser used in the high pressure side okay and, uh, uh, and what is the main function of that first is the answer will be the main function is to remove the heat remove the heat from uh, remove heat uh, of the hot vapor refrigerant and uh, which is discharged from the compressor so what is discharged from the compressor vapor refrigerant uh, that uh, he, that vapor refrigerant it is basically to is uh, allowed to cool in the in the condenser okay now the hot vapor refrigerant basically the hot vapor refrigerant uh, consists of the heat absorbed by the evaporator and the uh, and the heat and the heat of compression added by mechanical energy of the compressor motor now uh, the second point is that selection of condenser now selection of condenser it basically depends on the capacity of refrigerating system uh, how do you select that condenser that is used basically the first point is that uh, the selection of condenser generally depends on the capacity of refrigerating system and second point the type of refrigerant we all about know that already know that uh, refrigerant types of refrigerant now type of refrigerant is basically it may be R11, R12, R134, depending on the refrigerant used, you can select your condenser also. Now, the uh, last point is that can select, that is a, uh, depends on basically the type of cooling medium. Now, type of cooling medium, that cooling medium uh, may be uh, compressor, sorry, maybe uh, air cooled, maybe water cooled. Now, the type of cooling can be decided on the which type of condenser that can you select for a particular purpose, okay. Now, so this is the introduction part of condenser so main function is to remove heat of the hot vapor refrigerant which is discharged from the compressors okay and it is used in the high pressure side of the refrigeration system and the main selecting factor that can you select that condenser that is basically that depends on the several factors that basically number one is capacity of refrigerating system depending on the capacity of refrigerating system that means it is is it one tier or two tier three tier depending on that you can select your condenser also now and the type of refrigerant use the type of refrigerant means you can select your de condenser depending on refrigerant like it can be r11 r12 r134 so then that you that way you can cho choose your condenser also and the type of cooling medium also type of cooling medium is important part to select a particular condenser okay now uh, in the next part uh, in the next topic we can discuss on working of a condenser working of a condenser okay now it is seen in diagram that it is a block diagram of an rsc system or vcr system in which you can see that there are some compressor here one is evaporator and is a receiver and is this is condenser this is condenser basically a uh, coil coil medium now now working of condenser basically may be understood by basically by considering simple refrigerating system which is basically shown in the figure which is shown in the figure and the corresponding that corresponding this ph diagram also and the compressor basically the now uh, condenser is basically cool the vapor refrigerant uh, basically vapor refrigerant is transformed into um, saturated liquid by means of rejecting heat within the condensers so the compressor basically uh, first of all the compressor draws in a uh, compressor draws the superheated vapor refrigerant the compressor draws the superheated vapor refrigerant uh, from the evaporator okay so what a vapor refrigerant that contains heat uh, which is basically from the evaporator now 
that superheated vapor refrigerant by the discharge line uh, that highly superheated vapor from the compressor is pumped to the condenser okay by through the discharge line okay now the condenser cools the refrigerant the following stages now which are stages basically the following stage are that basically the three stages are basically are that that is basically sub cooling now total heat rejection take place in the from two to five process now one to two as you see that as you see on diagram that ps diagram corresponding ps diagram so this is the from evaporator you can select your compressor from the superheated vapor refrigerant now draws the superheated vapor refrigerant from the evaporator and that through the discharge line it goes to the condenser in the condenser they get reject heat from the vapor refrigerant it, and it backs to the liquid refrigerant okay so basically main function is to reject heat now as you see in your ph diagram that in ph diagram process 1 to 2 basically process 1 to 2 is shown in your diagram that 1 to 2 is basically a compression process and compression basically reversible adiabatic process is basically isentropic process now so ph diagram in which is shown in 1 to 2 plot so 1 to 2 diagram is indicated is your compression process now from 2 to 3 and 3 to 4 and 4 to 5 is totally is basically total heat rejection process which is basically occurs within the condenser from 2 to 5 from 2 to 5 so so this is 5 so 2 to 5 so 2 to 5 is total heat rejection process now total heat rejection process if you divide se separate categories separate function are there so from 2 to 3 that uh, heat rejection process basically called d superheating okay d superheating and process 3 to 4 actual condensation takes place in point 3 to 4 okay actually both at both are actually total heat rejection process but in total in heat rejection process there are a separate part are there so first of all from 2 to 3 is de superheating process from 3 to 4 is condensation process and 4 to 5 is sub cooling process now so what do you see here total heat rejected is equal to sub cooling plus condensation plus de superheating now this highly superheated vapor from the compressor is pumped to the condenser through the discharge line so this is the discharge line through which the vapor refrigerant uh, is passed through the condenser and uh, through condenser the vapor refrigerant uh, reject heat and that can uh, up to uh, uh, that can up to uh, reach up to uh, liquid refrigerant okay now the condenser basically main function is to cool now condenser cools the refrigerant in the following three stages the following three stages this these are the three stage sub cooling condensation sub cooling condensation and d superheating now first is uh, d superheating okay now in the d superheating which is indicated in the diagram 2 to 3 in the ps diagram and if you see here this is also a point 3 okay here now d super d superheating is the first uh, process uh, of the condenser which is uh, in which the superheated vapor is cooled to saturation temperature first of all superheated vapor is cooled to saturation temperature uh, it basically called desuperating so first of all in the condenser the heat rejection uh, takes place and in this process the superheated vapor is cooled to saturation temperature okay corresponding to the pressure of the refrigerant which is basically shown in the diagram in 2 to 3 so in process 2 to 3 the superheated vapor is cooled to saturation temperature so superheated this is the superheated point and this is the saturation point so from 2 to 3 it first reach up to saturation point and so this process is called de superheating this is called superheating now this is called at point 3 when the vapor refrigerant reach at point 3 that is called de superheating de superheating in which the vapor refrigerant reach actually in the uh, in the in the saturation point or saturation temperature okay now uh, in the d superheating occurs now this one is basically in the diagram in two to three and the d superheating occurs in the distance line and is basically occurs in the within the first few coils of the condenser basically condenser basically heat exchangers as you know that condenser basically condenser evaporator both are actually basically uh, uh, heat exchangers now as it is heat exchanger it can heat transform it can heat transfer from through the coils so in these first few coils the in the first few coils the, the superheating process takes place okay next 
in process 3 to 4, in process 3 to 4, the saturated vapor refrigerant, this is the saturated vapor refrigerant, this is the saturated vapor, this is the saturated vapor line and this is a saturated liquid line in the pH diagram. Now, when it is reached up to the saturated vapor line, now saturated vapor refrigerant give up its latent heat, give up its latent heat and is condensed to a saturated liquid refrigerant. Saturated, it transforms from saturated vapor refrigerant to saturated liquid refrigerant by means of rejecting latent heat. So, latent heat basically used Basically, it is basically a process in which the heat transfer takes place by means of rejecting heat through which a phase can transform its phase. Okay. Now, it's basically this process is basically called condensation. So, it's totally is under a total heat rejection process. Now, in the last part is the 4 to 5 process. In the 4 to 5 process, as you see, the temperature of the liquid refrigerant is reduced. The temperature of the refrigerant is reduced below its saturation because this is the saturation temperature point, the saturation line corresponding to pressure, corresponding to enthalpy, the saturation point. Now, in this process, in four, from 4 to 5, it indicates that the temperature of the liquid refrigerant is reduced below its saturation temperatures in order to increase the refrigerant effect. In order to increase the refrigerant effect. So, this is indicated in the process 4 to 5. So, this is the basic diagram of a uh, basic uh, VCR cycle in which is, you can see that this is the one compressor, evaporator, expansion valve and condenser there, whereas condenser basically in the form of a coil. Now, condenser basically works. Uh, if you describe on this, you can uh, you can uh, help in the pH diagram. As you see in the pH diagram, what you see that? That total heat rejection process takes place in the three manners. That first is desuperheating, then condensation, then subcooling. So, these are the main three processes that condenser can be cooled. Uh, the condenser uh, actually works. Okay. Now, the next topic we can discuss on uh, what are the factors. Okay. What are the factors uh, that can affect the condenser capacity? What are the factors that can affect the condenser capacity? Now, as you see that the uh, there are basically uh, three factors are there. So basically, first factor is most important. Most important, the basically the most important uh, factor that is basically material is first of, is the first conditions. Material is one uh, factor. Second point is amount of contact, and third point is basically temperature difference. Okay, the temperature difference. So basically, three factors that can affect the condenser capacity. Now uh, we can discuss on the next lecture video uh, on this topic. Okay, okay. Thank you very much for listening me and watching me. Goodbye.